What's happening, my ninjas? Appreciate y'all as always for tapping in with your boy, the Network Ninja, for another video. In today's one, um, I was looking at my exam history through Pearson View, or I guess it's through Cisco or whatever. Just looking at all the time and money that I done spent on taking the CCNA. So it was like two years and like four failed attempts that I have um, trying to pass the CCNA. I think I've passed it twice so far. Once when it was like the two part test, the ICND1 and ICND2, and then once when I just took it to just get recertified. So I just wanted to share this video to save you the time and the money. Hopefully you find some use, find some value out of this because doing it for two years and stuff, a lot of that had to do with the circumstances that was happening in my life. People that got kids, you know, baby mama drama. Uh, you know, I ain't making no excuses because excuses is the loser's candy, but you know what I'm saying? It just was like two years of just ups and downs, but nobody cares. Everybody cares about whether you pass it or not. And I done passed it. I done passed, like I said, all the other different kind of exams. And with these Cisco exams specifically, most recently passing that Encore like a year almost two years ago now. Yeah, almost two years ago. I'm gonna have to recertify here soon. But um, I just wanted to share this, which is pretty much the three mistakes that I was making that I had to learn from to, cause test taking, um, it's definitely a skill. I've learned that through my journey and my experience that this is a skill. So there's three mistakes that I think everybody should avoid and that's what I'm going to share with you today in today's video. If that's something that you're looking for, if you're trying to avoid any mistakes, you're trying to be one and done and pass these exams, then this will most likely be helpful for you. Um, as always, go ahead and hit your boy with that subscription. Subscribe to the channel because I'm going to be dropping these videos that is related to pretty much like IT, more specifically computer networking. That's my bread and butter, like route switch, CCNA. I'm studying for the NRC right now. I'm studying for cybersecurity and stuff. I'm trying to pivot into that kind of role. So if you're interested in content like that, go ahead, like the video, get me in them algos and share the video. You already know the drill. Also, I think it's important. Nevertheless, if you're going to watch this video or not, make sure to lock in to the end of the video because I think that the mistake at the end of the video, I think uh, a majority of the people that are taking these Cisco exams are making it. I haven't heard anybody talk about it. So um, I'm going to share it with you, the mistake that I was making and what I learned from it. And it was definitely a game changer for me. And I think it will be very useful and definitely be a game changer for you. So let's get into it right now with the first mistake that I was making, which is poorly managing my time time management, however you want to call it. So if you don't know by now, the Cisco exam or the CCNA exam, any of these Cisco exams that I've taken, they're going to be time tests. Pretty much at the beginning of each exam, they're going to be like, you get X amount of questions and you're going to get a lot in an X amount of time. Although it's not published anywhere, I think it's roughly between like 90 and 100 questions for the CCNA exam and then you're going to get 120 minutes to finish all of those questions. If you do the math, I'm terrible at math, but I think I did the math and it like a little bit a little bit over a minute per um per question. So you're going to have to be real fast and mind you, if you get a lab on there, you're going to have to be really on your game, you know what I'm saying, on your A game to just breeze right through those. So number 1 to learn from my mistake that poor time management to get better at you know doing that you're gonna have to take these practice exams seriously so what i do on these practice exams and you can do the same thing is you're gonna have things when you're studying these topics like subnet it might be your strength and something else might be your weakness so the stuff that you're really strong on when you're doing those practice exams, you're going to just have to 
try to pick up on the things that you're strong on. Try to be more self-aware of like, I'm really good at this topic or whatever, because those are going to be your gimme questions. Those are the ones that are you're going to be able to breeze right through or whatever, that they're not going to be able to really trick you on. So really try to lock into that and figure out where you're really good at, because that's just going to help you that much more when you get on the test, because you're going to need some kind of strategy to go against trying to beat this clock and everything. To avoid wasting time um, when you're on the actual test, during your practice test, there's either it's going to like if you use a Boson exam, I think there's a way where you could simulate the test and then you could like put a clock up there. But basically start like time yourself to do like, hey, if I'm going to knock out 10 or 20 questions, give yourself a time limit to do that. That way you start becoming more mindful of answering questions in a timely manner. And that way you can see when you do come across those questions you're strong on, you'll see that that's what's going to help you get to the next question faster and everything like that. And when it gets closer to the test day, if you're only doing like practicing like 10 or 20, keep up in it till you're doing like 30 questions in like 30 minutes or like 20 minutes or something to where it starts to balance out. That way, when it comes to test day, you're already in that natural flow of doing 100 questions in 100 minutes or you're pretty close to whatever they're going to be setting up on the actual exam for you. Again, it's going to be roughly like 120 minutes. So you want to build up to that during your practice exam. So you just want to get really mindful of that. Also, when you do sit the exam, you're going to want to keep that mindfulness about that clock because the major mistake I made was I would start forgetting about the clock and then I would see that it was getting, then I would notice the clock like toward the end of the test and then I'd just start clicking and rushing through these um, labs and everything and that's not good, right? So a way, a, like a strategy, I go in there now and I'm just looking at the clock and it's like, okay, I'm going to knock out 10 questions and then I'm going to just look at the clock and I'm going to knock out 10 more questions and look at the clock. You could do five questions and look at the clock, whatever you're comfortable with. All I'm saying is just make sure that you're looking at that clock. Don't forget that it's a time test because you can get lost in the sauce quick, especially like on a lab, because I think Cisco recommends any lab that you do, you're on there five to seven minutes. If you're on there 10 to 15 minutes, man, it's going to be a wrap. Pretty much. If you stuck on a lab for like 10 minutes and then you get another lab and you on that boy for another 10 minutes and then you get another lab, you gonna, you're just going to blow all your time. So if it's five to seven minutes and you're not getting it, do the best you can. I, I had to do it. And you might have to take that L for that day, but then at least you learn you're going to get your scores back and you're going to remember the lab and you're going to be like, oh, it was OSPF or something. And then you're just going to have to go back to the drawing board. But the whole thing about it is just really be mindful when you sit that exam about that clock, as well as during your practice exams. Make sure to be mindful of the clock. And that's how I improved on managing my time better when I got on these Cisco exams, which helped eliminate that mistake. The next mistake I was making was I used to read the question first. This is more like a test taking technique or like a hack more than anything. And again, this is what I'm comfortable with. You might be comfortable and people can read and comprehend stuff better than me. So it might not be your cup of tea, but what I like to do is just read the answers first. Number one, what this does for me is especially, like I said, if it's a gimme question, something that I'm super strong on, nine times out of 10, I could see one of them multiple choice answers or out of the select all that apply questions or whatever, them answers, some of them are going to be so bogus that you could just throw them out. Instead of reading the question and then trying to figure out each answer, I try to read the answer first and then I go up to the question and try to like look into the question and try to make common sense out of it just number one and then i'll if i can't make common sense out of it then i dig into it like technically because you know with these questions on the exam or if you don't know they want you to choose the best answer so it's going to get to a point where two of the answers look like they can they can go either way but if you sit there and you read the answers first and then look at the question again 
then you're going to say, oh, no, this is the best answer for what they're trying to say technically, right? Because they're going to be, it's a technical test. So they're going to try to get down to the nitty gritty and try to be really technical with you. So reading the answer is a really good technique. And I guess, so that's just like a mistake that I was making was just sitting there reading the question because, you know, um, you can just sit there and read the question. It's going to be company X, Y, and Z and all of this other stuff. Even the companies they come up with are so bogus because that has nothing to do with the actual answer that they're trying to get out of you or the knowledge that they're trying to test on you. It's just something that I feel is going to throw you off. And again, uh, I'm a heavy believer that Cisco is not in the business to just not take your money. That's the whole game, right? It's a game. They need to get your money so that they can stay in business. So they're not just handing out CCNAs left and right or these Encore exams or whatever, the CCMP and all of that. They're trying to make it purposefully hard so that you can be a recurring customer for them. So you're going to need every kind of advantage you can get and just eliminating that mistake of reading the question, which I feel in my opinion is a mistake, is going to better serve you when you go to sit the actual exam. All right, if you stayed around to this long, you might as well go ahead and subscribe to your boy because like I said at the beginning of this video, this was the game changer and I appreciate you for sticking around this long and let me go ahead and share it with y'all. When you go to sit this exam, you need to use that dry erase board. I cannot stress this enough. I've seen it to where I've seen people come in and take them exams and I've been guilty of it myself and I used to leave with that dry erase board be so empty I'm talking about that thing be full from the back to the front now and no I'm not talking about when you get in the actual exam and you're sitting there trying to work out a subnetting question you're doing all the math or whatever on the dry erase board that's not what my stuff is filled with I'm talking about when I go into the exam before I even because you got time, because you paid for this, you signed up, take your time, take a few breaths, pop your peppermint, whatever you got to do to get your mind right, then use that dry erase board, write down that, I don't know what it's called, a number line or that, that number or that set of numbers to where you can convert binary to decimal, the 0, 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128, um, write that down, write down your mnemonics, all the the ones for the OSI layer model, the all people seem to need data processing mnemonic or whatever mnemonics you need, whatever one, I can't think of them right now, but you know them different mnemonics and all the acronyms, break down the acronyms, write them all down, write down any little facts that you were struggling with, just kind of dump all of that information right there because I look at it as like, that's like an open book kind of test now because now I can dump a whole bunch of, like you could even be practicing this before you even get to that dry erase board. Just like when you're going over your notes on the days leading up to the test, like, I'm gonna write this on my dry erase board, I'm gonna write this. And it doesn't matter, some stuff that I write on there that I don't even be tested on. You know, and then I might fail, but you know what? They're gonna give me them scores back and then I'm gonna be like, oh, I was really weak on OSPF, but you better be best believe the next time I go in there, it's going to be full of OSPF stuff plus the other stuff, and I'm going to just keep doing it till I get it right. But my main point and the main game changer is when I had these like set of notes that I could just, boom, well, you can't really chill because it's still a time test, but you could be like, boom, you don't have to sit there and try to think, oh, what was that number? Uh, 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32. And then you wasting your time writing it down then and trying to do the decimal to binary conversion or that hex to decimal conversion then. You don't want to be stuck on the time test doing it. You got plenty of time to do it before the test. So take advantage of that. Again, it's all about advantages. It's a game. You know, you're going to have to use every advantage towards your favor so that you have the best kind of position to be or put yourself in that best kind of position to pass the exam. So that wraps it up. Hopefully, again, as always, you found this information useful. Always apply it to when you go to uh, sit the exam. And as you know, during that exam day, try to apply these kind of things that I've talked about to avoid these mistakes. Make sure that you're aware of them. Um, and hopefully you learned something, picked something up today. If you did, go ahead. Like I always say, just 
like the video it's gonna help me out to create more videos and all of that which i'm gonna be creating them anyways y'all i'm dropping them every week on y'all if you haven't noticed i'm coming every sunday at 9 eastern time so keep tapping in with your boy i'm gonna keep serving up this good good for y'all and i appreciate each and every one of y'all all my ninjas for just locking in with your boy and Go ahead and subscribe, of course, and I'm going to holla at y'all on that next video. Peace.